What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today will be a kind of a continuation in our intro to Kivi tutorial series, but um, this video really will stand on its own. Um, obviously, if you look at the screen now, there's a little bit of code from the previous videos that just kind of creates a minimum usable app. Um, but I, as you can see, I've shelled out the Kivi design file and we're gonna be changing most of what you see on the screen. I've just kept some stuff that'll help us once we get into the app. So if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, maybe go back and check out one. Essentially, we're working on creating a login screen that pops up right when you load your app, and then it goes on to future screens. Um, and today in particular, we're gonna be looking at creating an app with multiple screens and how you go about that in uh, Kivi with Python. So uh, without any further ado, let's get into it and kind of a few of the first things that we're gonna do here. Um, we need to import what's called Screen Manager from, uh, just like always, it's from kivi.uix, which is user interface, and then this is Screen Manager. And from that, we wanna import Screen Manager and also uh, just Screen. So Screen Manager is the tool that Kivi has built to handle multiple screens and then screen is an individual um, screen which probably kind of makes sense so then um, instead of like our login screen having been a uh, widget we're going to make it a screen um, and we can keep name password and confirm so this is just kind of us uh, adding some some stuff to a uh, output label that we'll recreate um, but then I'm also going to take the builder.load file. So this is where we tell the program what Kivi file to look for. Again, there's some assumption that you know some basics of Kivi if you're watching this one. But essentially, uh, importing this builder um, <clears throat> right here is what lets you actually point it at a specific Kivi file. Otherwise, the, the default name of a Kivi file it's going to look for is going to be the name of your app minus the word app. So if we had a file that was called different.kv, you wouldn't need this import and builder file. Um, but since we want to call it login.kv, um, then that's what we're going with. So there we go. That's our login screen. And what we want to do now is we want to make classes for our additional screens. So we'll say class and we'll just call it next window. Um, and that's also going to be a screen and just for now um, we're just going to pass this we don't need to put anything inside it just yet and you'll see why once we're on the Kivi design side of things um, but then we need a window for screen manager and so we'll just call that um, we'll call that window manager okay and that is not just going to be screen that is going to be screen manager um, all right and then we bring that in we pass it again and uh, let's see, that should be all we need to put in for now. Um, we will take this builder.load file and um, we'll just call that kv file equals builder.load. And then uh, if we come down to where we actually build the app, we do need to rather than um, return the login screen, we want to return the entire um, kv file. So we'll see once we've fleshed out the design file if I've missed something he here, but that should be good to go to get started on the other page now. Okay, so uh, a couple things about using Screen Manager. You're probably familiar with a KV file where you basically just start by putting whatever, like your grid layout or anything else right at the top. But with screen, uh, screen Manager, you need to start by calling whatever it is you named it. So we called it Window Manager to make it easy. But um, whatever you call it in your Python file, whatever you called your class, that's what you need to start with. And then you put the screens underneath that. So we, we called them, I believe the first screen is Login Screen, and then we said Next Window. Um, and like you do not have to follow my naming convention I know I kinda um, jump around a lot so uh, this is just I'm, I'm identifying where that name is coming from you can call it whatever you want but this is just telling okay you have window manager and then these are the windows underneath it and then you actually get into kinda what you're probably more familiar with which is gonna be um, actually creating the Kivi design parameters for them now underneath that so we'll start with the login screen 
and um, I am gonna pull in a lot of the elements from the previously designed uh, login app that we already had um, and put that on the first screen. So if you've been following along with the playlist, this will look pretty familiar. You can copy it, but I want this video to be able to stand on its own. Um, so if you have any questions on what you're seeing, let me know in the comments or you can check out some of the previous videos. The most important thing um, in screen manager when you have multiple screens you want to start by giving each screen a name um, so like this login screen we want it to pop up when it starts up so I'm gonna call it the startup screen and then we had a few parameters earlier on here we had uh, we had username and password because um, because this is a screen that's going to take um, in the username and password and then it's going to update a label based on what you what you enter in those two text boxes so um, those are a few parameters if you're making a different app you probably don't need those specific uh, variables what you probably will want to do then is just define your layout so I'm using a grid layout with two columns and uh, we had row force default true um, which actually I didn't love the look of that so we'll just leave that alone I won't put in a default height and then we're gonna start putting widgets onto the screen so we had a label with text that said username username um, okay and then we will just give it a color of red and so again um, if you haven't seen any Kivi design this is RGB alpha but it's not 0 to 255 it's 0 to 1 for each of them um, so that's something specific to Kivi you're gonna want to dive a little more into um, educating yourself on the Kivi design language if that uh, doesn't make sense to you but that'll work for now and we'll just give it a font size of 20 so if you have been following along um, every single video then you know there's some parameters we had in past videos that I'm not putting in there because I don't want this to be a 30 minute long video so then for this text input that's where we give it the ID of username which is you know the variable we identified up above um, and then we said we don't want multi-line for this false and then we gave it a background color of green and there we go uh, okay so I'm not gonna put the password text input in here just yet um, uh, what the heck it's already here I was gonna say it's just a little extra time but I guess I can just copy and paste for the most part password and you're welcome to play around with the design all you want and uh, if you have any questions on how to do something specific go ahead throw me a comment I will try to get back to you as soon as possible alrighty and then so inside the the two column grid layout that's all we need to put in um, but actually if you remember we had that entire grid layout inside a master grid layout so let's go ahead and do that as well um, and that was so that we could have a button underneath that spanned the whole screen. So grid layout, and this one we just want to have one column, and we had to define size for it, and it is going to be root dot width, and then root dot height. Okay, and so that's good now. Outside of our inner grid layout, but still in our master grid layout we are going to put in our confirm button and I believe the text we just had it say confirm entry and then let's give it a big old font size 32 and I don't think we really need to worry about height or anything let's give it a background color background color of and yeah we gave this a blue cool so I'm um, trying to make this a little bit uh, familiar for people who have been following the whole series um, straight through because this is just a button um, that has existed since the beginnings to kind of show adding different kinds of widgets um, 
and then the root.confirm function is what we built out over here to kind of take username and password and display it on the screen. Um, and that's why we also had this next widget, which is a label um, whose output we called output label. That's the actual text on the screen. Um, and then to start, it's blank. Uh, and then once you enter data, it gets filled in. So uh, this is just recreating the screen that we've already had on our login screen. Here's the actual, um, like now we're adding the second window. So you go back to the base level of indentation and you say, okay, time for the next window. And for now, just to show how the buttons work, um, I'm going to call the, the name of this, I believe, I'm going to call it next. Uh, I'll call it second because next is kind of doesn't make a ton of sense if you're going to have a bunch. Um, <clears throat> All right, and then uh, on this layout, let's go ahead and make a grid layout, just like the other one. Um, but on this guy, we'll just say columns one, and then size root dot width by root dot height. Okay, and uh, let's just put on here some basic stuff so we can tell that it's working. Let's say label with the text of second screen. <clears throat> And then color, that doesn't really matter. We'll make it red, cool. Um, and then we'll give it a font size of 20. And then let's put a button on here. And for now, um, we want this button to be like uh, return. Okay. And then um, we'll give it a font size 24. And then um, you need to have the on release for this button. Um, and actually on this confirm entry button, we're also gonna want a on release line because this is now where you're gonna actually tell it how to navigate between the two screens. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and run this. I don't think it's gonna show us multiple screens yet. Um, let's see, calls one invalid data after declaration yeah cuz I didn't indent them yeah these guys punks alright let's try that okay sorry about that um, it looks like so I just had us importing the builder and loading in the file before we had defined our classes um, and uh, you can, I mean, you can separate out the importing the builder if you want, but if you load in the file um, that calls in specific classes before you've defined your classes, then it's not going to see them. It's going to see them as unknown. So uh, I had us loading in the file way up above all the classes, and then it was saying, well, I don't know what any of these classes mean. Um, <clears throat> so that's how we got stuck with that. Uh, but we should be good to keep going now so let's go ahead and actually put in so I can get it to load now and it loads up onto our second screen and we would hope that if you hit this return button it would go back to the initial login screen but we haven't put that in yet so let's do that now um, so the on release is where you actually make that happen and you say app.root.current and so we're saying the root page that's up on the screen um, and you tell it what you want it to go to and so when we're on the first screen we want the button to take us to the second screen and when we're on the second screen same thing it's app.root.current and we want it to go back to startup okay so let's go ahead and check that's probably all we need to do just to get working yeah there we go so confirm entry return confirm entry return um, this video is getting up there in time so I'll just quickly cover one last thing um, you see it always slides to the right which is kind of it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're thinking okay well I hit confirm slide to the right that's fine but then when I hit return I should slide back to the left so the way you do that, let's go ahead and put these on their own line. Um, the way you do that is on your on release action, you're also going to define a direction for it. 
Um, so for this one, it's actually currently okay going right. So let's just start down here and say um, root.manager.transition.direction equals, and this one will send left. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out. That should be all we need to do. From entry, and that did not work. Release direction. Maybe because it's actually sliding left already. I might have that direction backwards. There we go. Ah, but okay, right. So you're redefining something that you you have to set on this button if you want it to be the opposite. Um, so we we need the first button to go left and then the second button to go right. So that should be all we need to do. Now we've made it, um, there we go, slides to the right, slides to the left, slides to the right, slides to the left. So um, I know it's a little bit weird. It's, it's not super intuitive, um, but that's how you create a multi-screen app in Kivi. Um, Sorry we got a little hung up there in the middle, but hopefully uh, you found that kind of useful. These obviously you can still do um, username and password and enter them in and this label will update. And then you, it would once you logged in, it would take you to your actual functional app that you're building over there. So that's a quick intro into how to do multi-screen apps in Kivi. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, if there's anything in particular you want to see in coming videos, let me know about in the comments below. As always, I really appreciate liking and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps me out a ton. And um, as always, good luck with your code, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.